lesson 10, giving by works or ministry. Alongside devotion to studying God's word together and worshiping together, we see here in Acts 2, 42 to 47, that we are to be devoted to each other. They were devoted to fellowship, and that included sharing life together and caring for each other. The Greek word used here for fellowship is koinonia, and this word has the idea of, of having in common, but also sharing, participation, and even partnering. Every time this word is used in the New Testament, it denotes some kind of sharing. Either sharing something with someone, like money or materials, or sharing in something with someone, like an experience or a project. Here in Acts, it seems mainly to be out of contributing or giving. And Acts 2, 42 to 47 reveals that rather than having a consumerist approach to church, the early church was full of contributors. They were giving of themselves. Verses 44 and 45 make this clear. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone who had need. Now, the early believers did not sell everything, as some have tried to say. Some still had houses, as verse 46 indicates. They broke bread in their homes, it says. So if they had sold it all, they wouldn't have that. The point is, the fellowship of the early church rested on a mutual generosity and sharing, looking out for each other. This involves all those many one another commands in the New Testament. With the word devoted alongside this, it could be understood as a meaning of, of a commitment to caring and ministering to each other. Th their commitment was not just to meeting, but to meeting each other's needs. The priority wasn't so much activities, but family-like relationships that were continuous. Fellowship, it appears, grows through giving. Jesus, after all, said it was better to give than to receive. And to experience true fellowship involves giving, and that costs, whether personally, financially, or otherwise. In these verses, by implication, people gave of their time, shared their homes, made meals, and financially supported each other. Sometimes people will say, you know, there, there's a lack of fellowship here. And while we can all do better, the truth is we will only have fellowship when we make it a practice to give, when we reach out to others. Fellowship will grow and the church will grow, as Ephesians 4.16 says, as each part does its work. Rather than being full of consumers, this church in Acts chapter 2 appears to be full of contributors. And this is God's purpose for us, that we give, serve, and support each other. This may be a new concept to you, but the biblical use of the word fellowship is actually about giving. When we all do this, we will be mutually blessed as God's people. But also, this along with our worship and our learning of God's word will also enhance our witness to those around us. When we love each other and live together like family, as God intended, it serves to cause others to take notice and in time to know Jesus and to come and worship our Father. Jesus said to his disciples in John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35, he says this, A new commandment I give to you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. When others see the love that exists amongst us, the conclusion will be that our God is the living God and come to glorify him also. Giving and working for others, true fellowship, overflows into and results in witnessing, and this is the final purpose God has for us. Now, before we look at the next video called Go, please answer the questions in the section of your booklet called Give.